Hello, my name's uh, Andy McCarran. I'm the MD of Sports Betting Community. Um, and I'm very pleased to be able to welcome one of the greats of uh, African football in a Premier League, English Premier League legend as well. Um, with me today is uh, Yaku, Yakubu Ayegbeni. Um, um, as I said, one of one of a, a very recognisable uh, name from his, his time in the uh, English Premier League. Um, uh, but the clubs playing played for clubs such as Portsmouth, Everton, Blackburn Rovers, Leicester City, and uh, Middlesbrough. But also he had time with uh, uh, Maccabi Haifa, and in China as well, Gangzhou RNF. That must have been quite interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> and uh, fifty-seven caps for the Super Eagles and twenty-one goals. I mean, I was I was looking through some of your stats today, and it was um, it was more or less a goal every other game. Yeah, you know, sometimes, you know, for me, as a player, you know, you always, like, put yourself under pressure. As a striker as well, you know, you have to score goals and then you have to play good. And uh, for me, you know, growing up, it's been pressure all my life. Even now, I retired already, it's still pressure. You never stop away from this pressure. But scoring goals was fun, you know. Football, when I play football, it's my happy place. Even now, when I train with these boys, the young kids, you know, I call them, this is my happy place. I'm enjoying doing it. Scoring goals is really, really, it's a big fun for me, you know. When you go home, you're happy, you, you, you smile, you know. I still watch my goals, you know, till now, you know, sometimes. I go online and uh, watch it. Sometimes I send to my young players and say, watch it. These are the stuff I'm trying to pass to you guys, you know. I'm telling you to do this stuff. It's not like don't do it. I'm telling you to do this in training, in games. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, you will score goals. You know, I try to pass the message to the young ones now, for them to know, to for them to believe. Some of them, the potential is there. Some of them, they don't believe. For me, I'm just here to help them to follow their dream and to believe you can achieve more better than me. If talent is not enough, it's hard work and dedication. For them to do this is one step at a time, one year, one good season, we change your life. It's the same with me. One good season changed my life for good. I mean, with regards to uh, the work ethic you got and uh, and the passion for football, um, is that something that's um, that's quite prevalent in, in, in Nigeria? It's a lot, I'm telling you. Everyone in Nigeria, you know, people with problems day by day basics, you know, they're not happy at home, you know. But I'm telling you, the two things they're happy in Nigeria is all about football. When they see football and they're going crazy and they're betting as well. When I choose to be ambassador with uh, interveting, I've watched them already. I've seen them already. They've been there for over 30 years. And the Nigerian people, they, they love people, reliable stuff. When they say this is this is what they're going to hand, they want to be there. And they've checked already. The company has been there for over 30 years. Reliable. And this is why people believe and they want to be there. And for me too, I don't want to be with people doing stuff and uh, at the end it's it's not working where they're like, oh, Yak is there, you know, he deceives us. I don't want I don't want that. I choose to be ambassador to this brand. You understand? Intervating. I knew they're reliable. And Nigeria they, they love reliable stuff. Even the gate man, the taxi guys, they hope try to like make money, you know, in football with deep sports, you know. They want to they just want to. Even they have problem, they have like I said, you know, they have like we know Nigeria is Naira. They have uh, 20 Naira, 30 Naira, 40 Naira, 50 Naira. They just want to put it there. They want to try their luck. That's why I choose to to be there. I know the Nigeria people, they love football. And they love doing this stuff, you know, put money. And I'm happy I've been there, you know, to make these guys, you know, back, people back home believe interverting. They are very, very reliable and stuff. I mean that that's one of the things um i mean you you obviously wouldn't um become an ambassador for such a brand if if you didn't if you weren't sure they were trustworthy uh, it, cuz it's it's your brand as well and um your your name goes a long way in nigeria 
Yeah, because they are trustworthy. You know, I don't want to put my name there. And uh, two months, three months, there's no way to be found. And uh, tomorrow is my name. People, we always think about, oh, Yak did this, or Yak was there. You know, it's like it deceives us. And uh, when you play it and you win, for sure you will get your money. You understand? It's not like you don't get it. This is why I choose to. They are reliable and they've been there for 30 years now. So it's really good. Uh, so uh, like you say, um, uh, betting is also a big part of um, how people en enjoy the football. I mean, how, how else do they follow the football there? Um, is there any leagues in particular that, pe that they follow? Or, um, you know, how popular is uh, the international leagues compared to the domestic league? They, they, they love uh, Premier League, I'm telling you. I think in Nigeria, nobody cares about the Nigeria Premier League, I'm telling you. The Nigeria Premier League, they have a game at 3 o'clock. They prefer to watch the one in the Premier League, German League, and you understand French League. They always want to see people outside. It's not a good idea, you understand. You sometimes you have to follow your own league, but they are more focused on the people in the Premier League and the Spanish League as well. But there's nothing we can do. But I hope they can choose to to follow the Nigeria League more. But there's a passion there. There's a big passion, big passion of football in Nigeria. And uh, they're so focused. Like I said to you initially, forget about the problems. They always, when they have problems when it comes to football, they forget about the problems. They always, <laughs> they're so, always there. <laughs> so, and and how, do, how do they watch football? Do people come together? Is it a big communal thing? Or is it people watching it? Um, um, in shops or in, in the living room? How, how do people um, uh, manage they, to follow football? They, they, they have bars where you can go and watch football, where mm -hmm. you have a few drinks and then you can watch in the bar. If you have TV in your uh, TV, where you can watch at home, you can watch at home. But now I think everywhere, you know, people go outside to watch in the bar in, with friends, you know, mostly weekends, you know, they, they're enjoying it. You guys that work as well, you know, finish work at five and they want to sit in the bar and watch football before they go home. Back then, there's no like uh, satellite where you can watch and they all, they all go on internet, but now they have all this stuff in Nigeria, all over the world where you can go to somewhere else to watch or a bar or a restaurant, you know, they all football, they all love football. They want to watch football. Premier League is back. <laughs> French League is back. Heavy League is back. You know, they enjoy Football in they love football in Nigeria a lot. I mean, um, you, say, you say they follow some of the leagues. Are, are there any uh, particular clubs that are, are followed more than others? Maybe ones that have had um, sort of um, uh, good local players playing for them. Yeah, you know, and when you look back, even now, you know, most Nigeria they also support Arsenal. They love Arsenal. Then uh, Egalo went to Man United. Some of them moved to Man United. Wherever that's good, that's good for me. Yeah. I'm a Man United fan. <laughs> <laughs> so wherever, wherever Nigerians play, is a love from Nigeria. They will move from another club because Nigeria guy is there already. Mm -hmm. They move to that club, to Leicester City, Portsmouth, you know, Blackburn Rovers. Mm -hmm. Everyone that moved to uh, Portsmouth, everyone know Portsmouth. Then Middlesbrough, everyone started follow Middlesbrough and then Blackburn Rovers, you know. Mm -hmm. We all support each other. You understand from Nigeria club, the players move to another one. You see everyone will move to that club. So they're watching. Mm -hmm. If you move to China, they want to study it. Oh, China, we need to watch China League. They always follow the players wherever they go. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's interesting. I mean, um, how, how are you going to um, uh, uh, work with Interwetten? Um, in the market, obviously, you've given them a. Um, uh, you, you, you're you're there as an ambassador for them. I mean, how does that work in practice? How how is how is it managing to manifest itself in the current environment? It's not be it's not be easy for everyone, you know. I was planning to to go to Nigeria, you know, but at the moment there's no way we can go now because of the COVID stuff and everything, you know. Mm. But hopefully, you know, maybe this year and. Uh, 
or next year. I think this year is almost gone already. Maybe next year, and then we can go over there, you know, to meet the Nigerian people too as well. And mm. we were planning to 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 have a small games, you know, to bring people all together, you know, sure. to to play and uh, to enjoy. It's all about giving back to these people that they love and they want to see people who is doing this stuff, you know. Mm. It would be great to 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 go back there and. Uh, with small games and uh, everyone, you know, the same iterating stuff, you know. It'll be great so, to make it bigger and bigger in Nigeria. I mean, with, with regards to Nigeria itself, obviously it, it's quite a big uh, a big betting market. Um, um, but it's also becoming a bit of a, a focus for a sort of international business. I mean, uh, how much should the international business market be looking at Nigeria uh, if they're looking for for a base in to, to start off doing business in Africa? It's not all about uh, the betting stuff. You know, there are so many stuff you can do in Nigeria. There are so many foreign people in Nigeria living in Nigeria, doing other stuff, doing business in Nigeria. Just like we in Nigeria is moving to Europe, different parts of the world, and then doing our own business as well. There are a lot of stuff you know you can go into in Nigeria, then uh, you're free to 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 do it. And uh, at the end, most people people will make money everywhere you go. For them to be in Nigeria doing business, they are making something for a living, and uh, it, I think it's safe for you to have the right platform and the uh, right business idea. You know, you know what you're doing. For sure, when you go to Nigeria, you will succeed with your business. I mean, with regards to um, putting uh, Nigeria on the international stage, um, that's something that football's been able to do. I mean, the Super Eagles have have uh, re- really represented the country well in a, a number of um, a number of World Cups now and other inter- inter- international uh, international tournaments. Um, I think you Olympic gold winners at one point. Um, I mean, it just goes to show you how how football can uh, reach a wider audience. I mean, how import, how powerful is 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 football for communicating a message in that way? It's a big, big message in Nigeria. Like I said, like I said before, you know, forget about the situation in Nigeria. When it comes to football, we forget about football. We we'll forget about the situation. Everyone is focused about football. As soon as the football is finished, then we now have to go back to the same problem to show the, the, the football bring everyone together. The unity about football in Nigeria is so big, it's so massive. It's a big sport in Nigeria. Everyone, even the young ones, the parents, you know, at the age of one and even some of the Parents, they, they don't have kids at the moment. They're thinking of already, I want my son to play football. <laughs> yeah, to show you how they love football, the passion uh, in Nigeria about football. They're crazy about football. It's 80% of them, they want their kids to, to, to play football. It never used to be like that, but now it's changed already. Everyone wants their kids. They all focus on their kids to play football, encourage their kids, you know. It's really good. They forget about their problem. They all focus on football. When it comes to football, everyone is there. They want to watch football. You know, the, the good thing, the football is back, you know. When no football, everyone is going crazy. Mm. They always think about problems and stuff like that. But when it comes to football, they forget about their stuff they are doing. They focus on football to watch. So it's, it's, it's a good release and a good way of people to coming to, together. To, to, Together is unbelievable. Even when the national team they are playing as well, you know, mm-hmm. everyone starts to talk about football. Nigeria is really, really like crazy about football. It's the passion. At the start of this conversation, you were talking about, um, you know, uh, bringing on some of the young players and um, showing them some some of your highlights uh, to show them, you know what kind of goals are possible and how people can be looking to move and things like that. I mean, what would you consider to be the highlights of your career? Moving from uh, Nigeria to, to Israel, Maccabi Haifa, that was the starting point you know, of my career, of my life, you know, mm-hmm. leaving my parents at the age of 18, you know, mm-hmm. 
to Maccabi, then I was there for almost two and a half years. And it, it was really tough, you know, I think maybe two, three guys that speak English in the team. Yossi, ben, Yossi Benayud and uh, two other guys, you know, that speak English. The rest they don't speak English. It was quite tough. When you come to a dressing room, no one speak English. They all speak Jewish and uh, it's so <laughs> difficult. It's so difficult. The communication was was hard. But the good thing, you know, as a sport man, you need to, when it comes to football, I try quick to learn how to pass the ball to me, you know, yeah, leave the ball to me, you know, small details about communication in the pitch. Then you, you'll be fine. When you go to a foreign country where they don't speak the language, you need to understand the small details in the pitch. When you understand the small details in the pitch, you'll be fine. But it takes time for other players, you know. Some of them take them six months, some, some of them one year or two years to have that. But for me, I was lucky enough I had that so quick. Then uh, moving from there to Portsmouth, it was unbelievable, you know, moving from Haifa to Portsmouth to play here, uh, one of the best league in the world. That was a dream. <laughs> I'm speaking to you now. I'm telling you I'm in Portsmouth already. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> it's just a coincidence, you understand? But yeah. It happened, you know, my sister still live here, you know, but from Portsmouth to Middlesbrough and uh, from one step to another, from one club to another bigger one, from another bigger one to another bigger one. As a player, that's a dream come true. Mm-hmm. Some of those players, they were there and uh, they went down. But for me, I was from one step to another step, to five step, ten step. And uh, I was so lucky. It's not all about uh, lucky or what. It's hard work and uh, dedication. I push myself to this level. Mm. I wish I had someone who would push me more. Maybe, you never know, maybe I would play for Real Madrid. <laughs> it's true, <laughs> but I did my best to to push myself to this place. I mean, today. Mm. I mean, you, you stuff could I tried to pass to the young ones. I was, I was going to say you might have even been able to play for Manchester United at some point. <laughs> you never know, you know. And, uh, yeah, I think I could play for Manchester United at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. true, but it was good, you know. And I still remember that, you know, when I played in the Champions League. And, mm-hmm. I think uh, Alex Ferguson said to Harry, he said, you should get him. I think he's good. Mm-hmm. And uh, Harry did. And uh, Harry is still one of the best managers I've ever worked with. We still speak sometimes, you know, send his message, you know. He's a great guy, you know. Harry made you believe you can become a bigger player. I remember when we played against uh, Arsenal, and he said to me, don't worry, say, just go there and destroy them, I'm telling you. <laughs> with the, with the 10% uh, more from him, you know, he gives you more more confidence, you know, than when you go to the pitch and uh, you want to you, you wanna play. I want to go home, be happy. I want to go home. I enjoy the game and uh, I play so well, scoring goes, helping my team and go home. I don't want to go home. Then uh, sad. When I lose, I go home. I feel bad, you know. Mostly when I don't play, when I don't play good. And uh, as a player, when you look at the bench, there are people there. If you don't perform, there are people there who take your place. So I always say to myself, I am better than the other guys. I don't. I never say to them in my sure. mind. I know I say. It's in your mind, did it? Uh... In my mind, I said yeah, yeah. I have, I respect my my players a lot, you know. I always say to myself, I'm better than the striker, no matter what. You give me the chance to play, mm. then I will show to the world and uh, I can do it. You have to you have to believe in yourself, you know. That's the stuff. So de- de- need, dedication dedication, believing in yourself is uh is uh, is, is certainly um uh yeah. The vibe that we get from getting this conversation. Yeah. You've you, you gotta put it in the hours, but you've also gotta believe you can do it. Let me tell you a funny story. It's not, it's not a funny story. Story. I remember when I signed from Everton, it was like 11.5 million, big money, you know. Then I signed already. 
Then I was playing one game, two game in, one game rest, one game, one off. I was I was not happy, you know. Then I went straight to meet the manager, David Moyes. I came in very early in the morning. I said, Gaffa, I need to see you. He said, come to my office. And I went to see him. So what's going on? I said, I don't understand why playing one game and then be on the bench, you understand? One game, be on the bench. I said, this is not me. I said, why don't you give me four or five games straight away if I don't perform? Then I know it's my fault. <laughs> then, he, then he said to me, he said, you've been training good, you know. I can't guarantee you four or five games. I said, but you try and give me four or five games if I don't perform. Then we see what happens. Then the next game we played at the weekend. I scored the second week the same, the third week the same. Then I never stopped scoring. <laughs> yeah. So it's a good conversation you know, for the pair of you, definitely. Yeah, you have, you you have to believe in yourself. When players, when the manager don't play you, you can go straight to the manager's office and knock at the door. Why I'm not playing? But when they give you the chance to play, you have to show to the manager I deserve to play. You understand? Yeah, yeah. Then you you don't need to go now to play. Then you play badly. She can never go back to the manager like. Can have another game. Can yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> you have to you have to believe in yourself. And I do the same in the national team. Yeah. The okay. national team. When you when you do in the national team, I deserve to play. But the mentality in uh, Nigeria sometimes is, oh, he said he wants to be first team, the first eleven player. No, I say I deserve to play. <laughs> but they think uh, you're arrogant. It's not arrogant. You have to believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fine line there, but um, I mean, now, now, now you've um, uh, you finished playing a couple of years ago. I mean, what are you uh, what are you looking forward to do? Yeah, I have my own uh, company now, sports uh, company. We're doing really, uh, we're doing really good with players, young players. Then I have another stuff we we're, we're doing in America now very soon. I think next year, you know, where we uh, Bentley Sports. We have some uh, players, you know, in camp to bring them in in America as well, you know, to give them the chance to train for two to three months. And uh, if they are good, we take them to clubs. And uh, the sky's the limit. It's up to the boys to to perform. So you're sure. you're giving them opportunities and mentoring. We give them, them opportunity, yeah, yeah. And I have my company called. Uh, my company called We Break Sports, you know, we've got some young players. We we try to push them from one club to another. We've got some young ones there already. And uh, hopefully in uh, one or two years, they'll become uh, Messi or Ronaldo or Mbappé or JJ Okocha or Mokachi <laughs> or the, the Yak. Oh, the Yak, <laughs> so, exactly. <laughs> so so we, we give them the platform. It's up to the boys to to perform, they have to work hard. It's all about dedication. We are there to advise you. We are there to give you the the, the, the tools to play. It's for you to perform. One good set, one good season, we change their life mm -hmm. for good. It's all about these boys to show they can play. Excellent. And um, I just going to wrap wrap it up with one one last question. I just wonder if you had a, a message to everybody who's uh, who's attending this week um, about how Africa is a is is a is a good place for the sports betting industry. Yeah, it's a big big uh, market, you know, in uh, Africa and in Nigeria as well. Like I said before, Nigeria is a place where everyone loves football. If you want to do stuff, you want to do business. I think. Uh, is the right place to be. And uh, I remember, I, before I go, I remember I came to Nigeria. So I went downstairs to the kitchen, to my, uh, the kitchen, you know. So I saw my my cook, he was on his phone. I was like, what are you doing? He's playing, not game, he's doing betting. <laughs> Football, like, do you play this game? He said, yes, I play, I'm like, wow. You see, to show everyone, you know, everyone in Nigeria, you know, they all love football. They all love to do stuff like that, you know. 
but for me to choose to work with uh, Intervention, I think uh, they are reliable and uh, I've checked their record, the record is clear. Just like me, my record is clear, their record is clear. <laughs> you understand, they've been there for 30 years and uh, people should trust them and uh, do business with them. I'm happy to be with them as ambassador role for them to help them to promote the the, the, the business and the, the company. I think uh, there's nothing to worry about. And uh, for them, I wish them best of luck for whatever they do in Nigeria, all over the world. I know it's not been easy with this COVID stuff and uh, I hope uh, we'll get our life back. And uh, I'm tired of uh, wearing this every day. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I hope we can get our life back and uh, we'll be safe and uh, everyone should try to stay safe and uh, hopefully we'll see and uh, we'll see we never know but hopefully we'll meet them soon fantastic lovely yeah. thank you very much for your time um, no it's problem. been a pleasure to speak to you and um, thank you yeah, and um I uh, hope you have much success with uh, Interwet. And like you say, you've both got an impressive record. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you then. See you then. See you then. Yeah.